Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel show out. Drama unfolds in Genoa City, secrets, lies, and unexpected twists. In the latest from Genoa City, tensions reach a boiling point as Phyllis clashes with Nick over Summer's future plans, only for Adam to throw Nikki a surprising curveball. Meanwhile, Sharon explodes in a dramatic confrontation with Phyllis, leading to shocking revelations as Summer receives devastating news of her own. Amidst the chaos, Sharon's anguish over Faith intensifies, while Claire finds herself navigating uncharted territory in matters of the heart. Stay tuned as the drama unfolds on The Young and the Restless. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. After watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Summer's plan is disputed by Phyllis and Nick, and Adam throws Nikki a curveball. On this episode of The Young and the Restless, Nick invites Phyllis to lunch, Kyle's scheme creates concerns for Claire, and Adam and Sally reconcile. Summer tells her mother at Society that although she detests Audra's return to the scene, does she honestly believe Claire is a bigger threat than Audra? Phyllis is one of them. Audra is dangerous, but Claire is innocent. Kyle's plan to harm Summer by sending Harrison and Claire to Paris infuriates Summer. Phyllis is shocked that he is making use of the fact that she is not the boy's biological mother against her. That needs to end. Summer laments that everything with Kyle has been one thing after another. He lacks reason. Phyllis tells Summer she needs to relax since it's exasperating. Errors occur when you lose control. While she maintains her focus, let Kyle make the blunders. You're going to prevail. How am I meant to remain composed, wonders Summer. Phyllis says she must keep in mind that her son's future is at jeopardy. Just focus on fixing it. Kyle won't do that because he's too busy leaping into bed with Audra and can't get past his massive ego. It doesn't matter how everything went off the tracks. Summer claims that she had really tried to be understanding of Claire, saying, but Audra? Phyllis claims that she is an ambitious and cunning serpent. Since Kyle is an abbot, she thinks it looks nice to be close to him. She is only known for being Tucker McCall's sidekick. She just thinks about money, power, and control. Kyle is unintentional harm. Is Harrison to be anywhere near that, Summer yells, no. Phyllis informs her daughter that Audra is a threat to her son, and that's how she combats this. You cannot possibly lose. Harrison meets Claire and Kyle at the Abbott Mansion. Kyle asks Harrison if he wants to visit Paris, France. Harrison is going to begin packing. Claire sends the child to the kitchen, thinking they should wait. She admits to Kyle that she isn't sure if visiting Paris is a good idea. Kyle queries her worries. Has he ran this by summer, she queries. Kyle claims to have told her, and she is confident Harrison will have a wonderful day. They will all embark on an expedition together. Claire doesn't think Summer will have a farewell party for them. Kyle brushes this off. Claire claims that she feels uneasy, as though he hasn't told her everything. Although Harrison will have an amazing time, he acknowledges that Summer is not thrilled about this and that's why he's doing it. Sorry, Claire, but she can't be there for it to happen. Kyle begs her not to let Summer's outburst influence her choice. Claire claims to be Harrison's mother and her cousin. Going to Paris when she is against it will make things worse, I want to have a meaningful relationship with her. Kyle contends that Harrison shouldn't have to endure suffering when Summer is the only one who is posing a threat. Harrison cannot go if she refuses to go. Claire queries whether he's attempting to coerce her into accepting. Have you considered inviting Summer to accompany you? Kyle claims that would be a total catastrophe. Claire is concerned that their disagreement stems from her. Summer acknowledges that Kyle is exactly who Harrison needs at this moment, as he assures her. 
the issue is with him. Every time they converse, an argument breaks out. Harrison shouldn't be exposed to the stress, in his opinion. Will she accompany them to Paris in order to remove him from it? Claire will give it some thought. Nick and Victoria inform Nikki at Crimson Lights that Adam has consented to take over Newman Media. Everyone is aware that he will stop at nothing to maintain his position. Nikki is certain that Victor is happy because he got his wish. All she can hope is that none of them live to regret it. At least it's temporary, Nick remarks. Nikki is concerned about Adam's potential harm to the company and what Victor is planning with all of this rearranging. Since he's such a snake in the grass, a lot may go wrong. How is Nikki doing in rehab, Victoria asks. With their love and support, Nikki may cross the finish line, and she is doing great. They take pride in her. Nick promises her they'll handle anything Dad gets up to because he has to go to a meeting. When he leaves, Nikki asks Victoria whether she feels better about her choice to return to her job. Victoria's look indicates that she isn't. Nikki understands now that she took the position purely for her own safety. For her own sake, she wouldn't want her to make such a concession. For her, Victoria would stop at nothing. What matters most is that you are improving. When Adam gets to Newman Media, Victor asks him whether he's prepared to get started right away. Adam advises him to wait while he sharpens his knives. Victor smirks, saying that his knives never dull. Victor tells Adam to keep his priorities straight and finish the tasks he has set out for himself, to which Adam nods and responds, and you are always ready to go to war. He hopes he can lead the business to new heights. Adam hopes he means it so they can stop this before it even gets started if all he's looking for is an attack dog. Victor maintains that he can manage the business anyway he sees proper. Adam queries how he is certain he won't let him go once he complies with his requests, saying, I know you won't disappoint me. He determines that he needs more time to formulate a strategy for Newman Media. When that's set up, he will follow his orders. Sufficiently? With one proviso, Victor growls. Adam sighs, what is it that you wanted? Blood, a limb, Victor only wants the division to spread the word about Glissade by using every platform available to it. That seems innocuous enough to Adam. Victor says he fits in the workplace and replies, I'll get right on it. Any bad feelings he may have about this should be put to rest. When Adam is by himself, he sighs, it's always about you, Pops. Your father is very pleased. Is it not? Sally walks through the door of Adam's office. Her entry into the depths of darkness surprises him. If she offended him earlier, she apologizes. A lot of what she stated was true, Adam acknowledges. Sally has faith in him and his scheme. Seeing Victor for who he is, he is attempting to act in Jack's best interests. Sally remembers that the last time they were in this office, he broke up with her, breaking her heart, and Adam asks, so, I have your blessing. Adam claims that was foolish and misinformed. She claims that just as his natural instinct was to defend her, so too will it shield him from this. They chuckle as she takes out a gift, a Happy New Year sign. In July, what could be more ideal, she apologizes for their prior argument. Adam is as well. All he wanted to do was trust that she would protect him. Sally will support him no matter what. She speaks up for this reason. Adam needs her to have faith in his competence. Sally doesn't agree with what's happening, but she still has faith in him. I hope that's not what you're asking me to do. Summer informs Phyllis at Society that Kyle is already upset with her for hiring an attorney. Let him be, Phyllis advises, she must go above and beyond to prevail. When Nick comes, he wants to know what's going on. Summer informs him that Harrison could be taken to Paris by Kyle, Audra, and Claire. Nick fails to recognize the issue. 
Phyllis queries why he is downplaying the true nature of the situation. Summer claims that Kyle is endangering their son by acting carelessly. Nick implores her to speak with Kyle. It ends with shouting, she claims. If the attorney speaks, perhaps Phyllis will listen. Nick advises Harrison not to involve his parents in a power struggle. Phyllis believes that arguing it out in court is preferable to Audra getting too close to Harrison. Nick queries how they arrived. Phyllis feels it's best to handle this in court and the more she learns about Audra, the more she begs you to, just trust me on this, please. Is Summer sure this is what she wants? Nick wonders. Although she doesn't want to, she feels powerless to stop herself. There's no way that their relationship can be strictly professional because Kyle is at odds with everyone and the power Audra has over him. Nick claims that Kyle adores his son. Summer is aware of this, but for now he only thinks of pandemonium. Phyllis is upset with Audra. We are here for you, Summer, if you choose to fight this. Don't we, Nick gives a nod in agreement. Summer plans to visit the attorney and says, whatever you need, Supergirl. She thinks that a custody battle in progress will prevent Kyle from removing the boy from the group. After she leaves, Nick laments that Phyllis is making their daughter feel upset over Audra. Phyllis warned her about the nightmare that may be a custody dispute. Nick reminds her that she suffered a great deal during her custody dispute for Daniel. I understand that's not what you want for our daughter. Kyle, according to Phyllis, is making terrible choices. Nick does not consider working with Audra to be a bad choice. She doesn't seem to be involved in Harrison's life. You don't know how much time she'll spend with Harrison, Phyllis snaps back. She demonstrates her character by reminding him that Audra destroyed Noah's heart. Nick feels that diffusing the situation would be beneficial for them all. I thought you were on our daughter's side. He won't be persuaded by the disgusting look she's giving him. Phyllis claims that she has been pushing Summer to get over her feelings for Claire and that she should be given credit for it. Additionally, she warned her not to brawl with Kyle in public. Phyllis also advised her to maintain her composure in regards to Audra. Nick makes fun of her increased maturity. After learning that his meeting has been cancelled, he invites Phyllis to lunch. Claire gushes about her work as a nanny when she meets Victoria and Nikki at Crimson Lights. Nikki assures Victoria that this new wrinkle is only temporary before leaving to conduct an errand. Claire queries whether her mother has cause for concern. Victoria tells Claire she's heading back to Newman Enterprises and replies, definitely not. Claire is overjoyed. In a change in tone, Claire tells Victoria that she could use her guidance. Victoria is informed by her of Kyle's invitation to travel to Paris with Harrison and him. Victoria believes it sounds fantastic. So why do I feel so anxious? Claire queries. Adam laughs at the notion that he could keep Sally quiet at Newman Media. Since she is his partner, her opinions count. He vows to keep an eye out while they flirt. He'll keep Jack safe and bring her joy. They kiss, and Sally adds, you already do. Sally claims to have complete faith in him. Having founded Newman Media, he has now fully returned to his intended position. As they are making out, he whispers, where I'm meant to be is with you. And then Nikki shows there. I'm so glad my company is in such capable hands, exclaims a furious her. After Sally leaves, Nikki asks Adam if he feels good about himself. She wants to know Victor's opinion on everything and wonders if he was coerced into doing this. Adam tells her he never thought he would be back at the company, where he was pleased running it with Nick. But you said yes, Nikki raises her eyebrows. Adam responds, Dad was insistent. Nikki is aware of his character traits, but she also believes he may be hiding more information. Adam pretends that he doesn't know as much as the rest of us. 
Nikki tells him she'll be back and that this is just a temporary situation. She'll be expecting him to politely exit her office at that point. Nikki rolls her eyes as Adam clears his throat to continue, because she knew there would be a backlash. Adam informs Nikki that although Victor won't divulge any specifics, he claims to have a plan for him after this. He feels uncomfortable with that, therefore he might be hesitant to give up control. Is there a threat in there somewhere, queries Nikki, Adam suggests that she get Victor to inform her about his plans for him. Nikki queries. Or what? Will you defend Newman Media with me, Adam would like to think that they could cooperate for their shared gain. Nikki frowns and says, the more you help me, the less likely conflict will be in the future. The next update for today. Summer gets bad news, and Sharon loses it all over Phyllis. On this episode of The Young and the Restless, Nick confides in Phyllis, Claire confesses her emotions for Kyle, and Chelsea chooses to tell Billy. Victoria questions Claire at Crimson Lights about the specific thing about Kyle's invitation to Paris that is bothering her. Claire assumes her mother finds her strange, this ought to be obvious, right? She acknowledges that she is anxious to travel abroad for the first time. After bringing up Paris, Victoria understands that it's not the main issue. Is her reluctance to travel because to Summer? Claire claims that this would be like a slap in the face of Summer, who has never felt at ease with her being with Harrison. That's how it feels, but she's done everything she can. Things get more complicated when Victoria finds out that Summer and Kyle might be getting into a custody dispute. Victoria thinks there's more to this decision than just what Summer wants. For Claire, it's unfair since all Kyle wants is to spend time with his son. She likes him, and he's a fantastic dad. Victoria looks at her and says that's not what she believes it to be. Victoria inquires as to her thoughts. Victoria asks, do you have feelings for him? Claire responds, that I do. For some time now, Victoria claims she has felt a growing bond with Kyle. Does Claire believe that his invitation is more than just pleasant, she thinks. No, Claire responds, he has never behaved inappropriately. Victoria feels confused about Paris and wonders whether it's because she's growing more in love with Kyle. Claire sobs and falters. Victoria says she's sorry for poking her nose in. Claire reassures us that she is only being a mother. She says, I love you for that, and since she's experienced far more than she has, she wants to know what she thinks. Victoria bemoans the fact that she has aired as well and wishes Claire will not. Claire feels a little uncomfortable talking about how she's feeling. I've never been in a romantic relationship, so I'm not sure if I can tell you if I have strong feelings for Kyle. Nick and Phyllis joke around at society about his lack of dating. She's glad to spare him the awkward experience of eating lunch by himself. She teases Nick, asking who is paying for lunch, saying, You. Without a doubt, you. She groans abruptly. Nick queries, what if Phyllis doesn't specify who or what? Sharon stands in the threshold. Red muses whether he will regret asking her out to lunch at this point. Phyllis is asked by Nick not to start anything. She gops, of course I won't start anything, and he knows that she has been quite polite to Sharon. Nick expresses regret. All he wants is peace. Tell it to her, Phyllis replies, pointing out that her behavior has been erratic lately. Sharon walks up to Nick and says she came for takeaway because she's been working all morning. Is everything else all right, he queries. I'm fine, says Sharon. Nick, I didn't mean to bother you. After saying, enjoy your meal, she turns to leave. What is up with Sharon, Phyllis asks Nick. Nick grudgingly acknowledges that he worries about Sharon. He notes that she has also observed her behavior. What have you observed? Phyllis informs him that she appears to be somewhere else when she sees her lately around the town. 
It seems as though she doesn't even recognize her when she speaks with her. Then, last week at Crimson Lights, there was an extremely strange episode. They conversed, she placed her order for coffee, which was a terrible, treacly cup of stuff. When she brought it up to her, she went completely insane on her even though she had assumed it was a joke. Nick sighs and adds, I apologize. Phyllis remarks that even her extremely polite apologies seemed strange. She dismissed it as a symptom of the constant tension between them. Nick claims that it goes beyond that. He cannot drop a bomb like that and then choose not to notify her, Phyllis warns. Nick reveals to Phyllis that Sharon's physicians have adjusted her medication and begs her to handle this information carefully. She's finding it difficult to get used to them. And? Phyllis queries, Nick concludes, and that's it. That's all I have. Phyllis is certain that the physicians will resolve the issue and she won't act strangely again. She knows that Nick is experiencing his hero complex. Sharon is not the same lady that he saw in this vision, not even a few years ago. Nick simply believes that the medication should have been sorted out a long time ago and that she doesn't need you to rescue her. If he knew she was okay, he would feel better. To gain a sense of the situation, he proposes that they ask her to accompany them. He owes her, but Phyllis says, sure, yeah, and she's cool with it. As soon as Chance greets Summer at the club, she begins talking about Kyle without pausing. Instead, she would like to chat about him. Chance informs her that the press announcement has been written and that the separation at Chancellor is now official. Everything is unfolding according per their design, not his. The more he considers it, the more certain he becomes that this will be Chancellor's worst nightmare. Chance informs Summer that Jill believes giving Billy too much power was a mistake. She would take it back if she could, but for now she is unable to. Summer finds out that Winters will be run by Devin and Nate. Summer believes Lily will control Billy. Chance believes it will be difficult. Moreover, Billy is currently dealing with this legacy issue. He wants to establish his dominance and status as the top dog in the world. Summer queries whether Chancellor is reconsidering his decision to stay, saying, it's an ego trip and I don't think Chancellor is going to survive. Chance mulls about whether to leave the company that bears his name. Though he is unable to go at this time, he is not taking anything for granted. Summer feels that Billy is solely to blame for this. Every time he pushes it too far, someone else has to pay the price. Chelsea encourages herself to forget about Adam and concentrate on Connor while they are at the park, but all she can think about is what happened with Adam, especially when she's with Billy. She is unable to breathe due to the overwhelming guilt. If she had told him, she wonders if he would have the capacity to forgive her. She is unable to continue in this manner. Billy shows there and inquires as to what's going on, right before Chelsea realizes she must tell him the truth. Chelsea apologizes to Billy. I'm done with this for now. Billy says she's handled herself so well and that she can manage this. He's too good for her, says Chelsea to him. Billy says, what is it, as she turns away and chuckles, we both know that's not true. Is that you, Connor? Has anything occurred, Chelsea responds, it's not Connor at all. Billy asks her once more to explain what's happening. It's me, he says. Chelsea says, let me be here for you. She wonders how he found her. There, he knows she adores it. What brings you here, Chelsea claims she is generally calmed by the view. What's bothering her so much, he wonders. With Adam and Connor, Chelsea feels like she's on a roller coaster. They seem to have been coping with this for an eternity. Billy feels that his time has been overtaken by the breakup with Chancellor. Chelsea tells him, he's been my rock, as she starts crying. She laments that she has been weak and has made mistakes, saying, I wish I could have been as strong as you. 
she protests that she is at fault despite his assurances that she is not. It's tearing her up inside that she's weak. Billy queries whether Adam gave her these ideas. She declines right away. Billy begs her to open up to him completely, he can take anything. Chelsea says she's all right. She wasn't fine a minute ago, he claims. Chelsea determines that she must count her blessings and concentrate on Connor's advancement. He belongs to them. They share a kiss. Billy is happy he could support her. All of a sudden, Chelsea realizes that she has a meeting at Marchetti. As they leave together, hand in hand, she gives Billy her sincere gratitude. Claire says she feels confident in most aspects of her life at Crimson Lights. However, she is not as experienced in romance as Katie is. Victoria is devastated by this. Claire informs her that she is discussing this with her therapist. She is aware of her feelings toward Kyle. How is she feeling, Victoria asks. It seems as though Claire has known him for a longer time than she has, as she states, safe. It's simple. As I mentioned earlier, friendship has the potential to develop into attraction, Victoria cautions. When she isn't with Kyle, does she still think about him? Claire hesitates, sometimes, and then confesses that she gets a sense when she meets him in the eyes. Victoria finds this to be much more than just a casual friendship. It won't be done by Claire. She will acknowledge and honor Kyle's authority as her boss. She would never want to put Harrison's relationship in danger. Victoria considers this to be quite mature. She doesn't believe that her trip to Paris should worry her. She says, forget what Summer thinks, and have a great time. Further, Michelle Stafford's post expressing gratitude for her daughter Natalia. Nick approaches Sharon at Society and invites her to come along while she waits for her takeaway. Phyllis extends a warm greeting. This isn't some kind of trap, is it, teases Sharon, Nick remarks, they all sit together, and Phyllis seems cool. Nick asks Sharon if she wants a drink, and she claims she's okay, while putting her big eyes out. Phyllis smiles and says, look at us. As Sharon notices how much time Phyllis and Nick have been spending together lately, Phyllis strikes up a conversation. What's the deal with that? It's not what she's thinking, according to Phyllis. They're just hanging around, nothing romantic is happening, Nick continues. Summer is having some issues, Phyllis acknowledges. Sharon finds it admirable that they can support one another. Phyllis mentions that she spoke with Faith this morning. What was that about, asks Sharon as she overhears something over the table, Nick assumes a cautious expression as Phyllis informs him that they have been discussing the past lately. You had no right to do that, snarls Sharon. Well, I just wanted to tell you what a remarkable young lady she is, Phyllis gops. She doesn't need her to tell her that, Sharon hollers back. She has no business engaging in in-depth discussions with her daughter. With Phyllis, my daughter, Nick appears terrified. Chance questions Summer about why she is constantly checking her phone at the club. Since Kyle is intensifying things, she acknowledges that she is awaiting word from her lawyer. Chance finds out that Kyle is going to Paris for business and will be bringing Harrison and Claire along. Apologizing, Chance wonders how they might divert her attention from this. Summer believes it isn't feasible. Chance decides they ought to go outside and spend some time in the sun. Summer receives a text at the park from her lawyer informing her that she is powerless to stop Kyle from taking Harrison to Paris. Do I have any rights as a parent at all, she sobs. Victoria tells Claire in Crimson Lights that although making decisions is the hardest thing in life, they should always be hers. You experience life and gain knowledge. Victoria requests that she inform her of her decision. Claire claims that she will. Victoria also says, I love you, Mom. After she leaves, 
Claire calls Kyle to let him know that she's prepared to make good use of her never-used passport. I would adore traveling to Paris alongside you and Harrison. Phyllis tells Sharon in society that she didn't mean any damage. When Faith told her about her boyfriend, they both kind of chuckled and commiserated. She just really impressed me. She is amazing. I'm expressing gratitude to you, Nick thinks Phyllis. Sharon growls, all right. Phyllis hears her clearly, but moving forward, I would appreciate it if you would not talk about our past with her or offer your advice to Faith about romance. With a stern smile, Sharon bids them farewell for the remainder of their day and leaves. Nick is asked by Phyllis, what do you got? Nick suggests that it might just be Sharon's overbearing motherhood, or it might be related to her medications. Sharon steps outside, surveys her surroundings with a look of rage, and continues to move. The next update for today. Claire's never had a romantic relationship, Sharon loses it over Faith. According to Friday, July 19, spoilers for The Young and the Restless show, Victoria Newman will be curious to know why Claire Grace is hesitant to accept Kyle Abbott's offer of a trip to Paris. Eventually, Victoria will worry if this has anything to do with Claire's love for Kyle, but Claire will tell her that Kyle has been acting entirely professionally and that they are simply friends. Claire acknowledges that she has never been in a love relationship, so she is unable to understand her own emotions. Once Claire talks about staring into Kyle's eyes and how she feels comfortable with him, Victoria will believe that Claire feels more than just friends with him. Since Kyle is her boss, Claire won't think it matters, and she won't cross that line since she doesn't want to jeopardize her connection with Harrison Abbott. Victoria will recognize it and advise Claire to make the decision to travel to Paris at that time, nonetheless, Claire must make the final decision. Claire will give Kyle a call after Victoria departs to let him know she has accepted his offer to look after Harrison while he is in Paris. On Friday's YNR episode, Chance Chancellor, Connor Floyd, will chat about all the controversies surrounding the demerger while Summer Newman is preoccupied with her phone at the GCAC. Summer will finally thank Chance for his support when he takes her out for some sunshine in the park. When Summer's attorney comes back to her, she will finally receive the message she was waiting for. Summer will become irate over her lack of rights after realizing she can't stop Kyle and Harrison from leaving the country. She'll come to the realization that she can no longer bear the guilt over with Chelsea Lawson. When Billy Abbott finds out what really happened with Adam Newman, Chelsea will feel compelled to tell him the truth in the hopes that he will pardon her. Chelsea will become a wreck emotionally about her sins and weakness when Billy finds her in the park. Chelsea will almost admit it, but in the end, all she will say is that since Billy is her rock and Connor Newman is getting better, she should simply be grateful. Chelsea will grab Billy's hand and let him bring her back to the office after claiming she forgot about a Marchetti meeting. Nick Newman and Phyllis Summers at the same table at Society will not seem to delight Sharon Newman. Phyllis will discuss some unusual exchanges she's had with Sharon recently when she moves over to the bar to wait for her takeout. Phyllis hopes that after Nick acknowledges that Sharon is having trouble with some medication modifications, Sharon will be able to return to her regular self. While everything is going on, Phyllis will let Nick know that Sharon is stronger than he is and doesn't need his help to get by. Nick should still extend an invitation to Sharon to come along while she waits for her lunch, though. Nick will be able to determine Sharon's status in this method. Sharon will sit down as soon as Nick extends the invitation and start questioning them about how much time they're spending together. Just before Phyllis brings up her earlier interaction with Faith Newman, Nick reassures Sharon that it's not romantic. Anxious, Sharon will question Phyllis about what was said. Sharon will become enraged and say that Phyllis has no right to do that while she tries to clarify. Phyllis will say she's sorry, saying she didn't mean any harm, and Nick will support her in this regard. Sharon will advise Phyllis not to discuss their past or offer Faith any romantic counsel going forward. 
Sharon will calm down and tell them to have a nice rest of the day as she heads out with her takeaway because Phyllis will say she hears her clearly. Sharon will appear uneasy outside the restaurant after she leaves. Concerning Sharon, Phyllis will tell Nick that she can change from being cool to furious in an instant. Phyllis will appear concerned that the situation involves more than just changing her medicine or being a careful mother. According to spoilers for The Young and the Restless, Sharon's conduct will become more unpredictable. Stay in for updates on any concerning developments and additional forecasts regarding her decline. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.